Chris Bay debuts this week on Impact Wrestling. What's next for the North? Lacey Ryan impresses again. An interview with Impact star Larry D. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin, as heard right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Larry D. and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hey folks, Lewis here. Hope everybody is doing well. I know it's a bit of a challenging time right now with this coronavirus that seems to be uh, sweeping the nation, sweeping the world, the pandemic. And uh, not a good thing. Not a good thing. Um, Professional wrestling fans, you know, all these indie shows are getting canceled. Lockdown's been canceled. Not a very good time right now. So just... Spend a little time with me right now. I'm going to talk about Impact Wrestling. I got a Larry D interview coming up at the end of this uh, podcast, so you're not going to want to miss that. So uh, let's let's um, let's not dwell on the bad times right now. Let's talk about some good times right now. Lacey Ryan, Lacey Ryan. Oh my gosh, Lacey Ryan has impressed the hell out of me. Holy smoke! Two weeks ago against Jordan Grace. Uh, for the Impact uh, Knockouts title. What a match. What a match that was. And then this week, another great match against Kiera Hogan. If they don't get on the ball right now and jump on this and sign her, like, immediately, there is something wrong with Scott Tamora and Don Callis. I'm sorry. Lacey Ryan deserves to be on the Impact Wrestling Knockouts roster. Hands down, 100%. No argument there. She was absolutely fantastic. My goodness. I just, I couldn't get over how good she was. And and watching it, I'm thinking, why isn't she on the Impact Wrestling roster? By, I mean, she was. She did an explosion match um, some uh, few weeks back. It was against um, Taya Valkyrie. It was another tremendous match. That was the first time I saw her, and I was like, "Wow, that's she's she's pretty good." But against Grace and Kara Hogan, whew, wow, just. Just and a lot of people were impressed with her as well because a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive comments on social media concerning Lacey Ryan. So they need to jump on it right now and say, "Wow, we have somebody, we have somebody good here, and we need to have her not just when we go to Las Vegas. We need to have her on the damn roster full time, please. They they got to get her on, on the roster. It's just she just did a absolutely fantastic job." Fantastic job. Tremendous talent. Tremendous talent. Lacey Ryan. I, I, you know, I, I it's just, I, I, it just boggles the mind how that there's a talent like that out there and they're not signed to anybody and Impact Wrestling hasn't signed her yet. They, they, they should have signed her as soon as this, the Las Vegas tapings ended or before they ended, they should have had her under a three, on a three-year contract. On a three-year contract. There's no no if ands, or buts about it. She deserves to be on the Impact Wrestling roster. And I would be very disappointed if Cody Rhodes watched her on Impact Wrestling and offered her a contract for AEW and kind of, you know, pulled her, pulled, uh, pulled the rug, uh, pulled the Impact Wrestling rug out from under her feet and, um, and made her uh, an, an AEW superstar. I, I would hate to see something like that happen. Or even NXT. She's ready. She's ready. She's ready for the big time. And uh, let her get away in back wrestling. Don't let her get away. Don't let her get away. All right. So we had um, Chris Bay. Chris Bay made his debut. And I, I love this debut. I love Chris Bay. That's another very, very talented young wrestler that fits perfectly in Impact Wrestling, because that's exactly what they need. They need someone like Chris Bay, and I'm so glad that he didn't sign with the AEW, and he's uh, with Impact Wrestling. Maybe Chris Bay wants to, uh, you know, go over to Lacey Ryan and say, "Hey, hey, hey, don't, don't worry about AEW. You want to sign here with Impact <laughs> with Impact Wrestling?" But uh, great debut. The fans were behind him. I know he's a Las Vegas guy, but the fans were behind him. It was a g- excellent debut. 
for Chris Bay, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else Chris Bay can bring to the Impact Wrestling table. I know next week he's in a scramble match to determine the uh, number one contender for the X Division title. I... I'd be surprised if he wins that match, but uh, I, on the flip side of that, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he wins that match. Um, he's definite, definite contender for the X Division title. I personally think Willie Mack is going to win the match, and we're going to get Willie Mack against Ace Austin. But um, lots of potential, lots of upside there for, for Chris Bay, and that's like I said, that's exactly what they need. Wrestlers like that. You know, that next guy they should bring is, and I'm going to say this over and over again until they bring him in, Aiden Prince. Aiden Prince should be on the Impact Wrestling roster. Listen to the three people that I just spoke about. Lacey Ryan, Chris Bay, Aiden Prince. Only one of them is on the Impact Wrestling roster right now. Why, why Aiden Prince is not on the Impact Wrestling roster right now is boggles my mind i've asked other wrestlers about it that i have uh, friendly relationships with and they feel the same way i'm not gonna I'm not gonna say any names but they feel the same way they can't believe that aiden prince is not on is not under contract with impact wrestling it just it just boggles my mind i mean aiden prince versus chris bay would be a tremendous match a tremendous match wow just they kind of they 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 gotta they gotta start uh, they gotta start signing these guys, man. You know, by the time uh, here's here's the thing here's the thing. Um, within two months' time, I want the three names I just said to be signed to Impact Wrestling: Lacey Ryan, Chris Bay, Aiden Prince. If they're all three are signed to Impact Wrestling, well, Chris Bay is in, is signed. But if the other two are not signed to Impact Wrestling within two months, within a month. I'm going to be very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. I mean, if they're throwing out money to like guys like Sabu, you know, okay, we, we, don't, we don't need guys like Sabu. If he wants to show up, you know, and uh, throw a chair at somebody, uh, one-off appearance, and he, and he points to the ceiling once, and the fans, oh, Sabu, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's fine. But I don't want to see Sabu every week. I know they have a match coming up, Rhino and Sabu against OVE. I, I'm not interested really in that match. I'm not really interested in that match, but uh, the match is going to happen anyway. But um, they uh, they got to sign the young guys. They got to sign the young guys, man. They, the young guy, the Chris Bay. Uh, people watch Chris Bay, and they're thinking, "Wow, I, I, I can't wait to see what Chris Bay does next." You know, that's that's those are the types of guys that that they need in Impact Wrestling. And for all the all the Impact Wrestling trolls that have been calling Chris Bay Kofi Kingston light, you could go screw yourselves. Okay, you could go screw yourself because Chris Bay is Chris Bay. He's not Kofi Kingston light. But because they have what dreadlocks, because they have dreadlocks uh, that. Um, that you have to call him Kofi Kingston Light. It's just too, too. They have they have a similar style. Yeah, they have a similar style. But Chris Bay is is a talent all on his own. He's not Kofi Kingston Light. Just like the, the schmucks were calling Josh Alexander Rick Steiner Light because they both wear headgear. Stupidity, stupidity. Chris Bay is Chris Bay, and he's fantastic. And I can't wait to see what else he's gonna bring to the table for Impact Wrestling. Ah, so what do we got next? I oh, uh, let's talk about the North. Let's talk about the North. Um, what's next for the North? What is next for the North? They uh, they just uh, defeated um, uh, T J Perkins and T J P and Falaba. Uh, they success- successfully defended the titles against them. Uh, so then, so then you guys think, what's next? They had the, the little, uh, they had, uh, they feuded with them for a few weeks, but the feud is over now. The North retains. Uh, great match, by the way. Great match, by the way, against uh, TJP and Falaba. Um, absolutely love the match, and I love that you know the shows have been kicked off with with the North. Uh, in like a tag, usually if there's a tag team title match, uh, that kicks off the show. It's kind of sets the tone for the show, which which I really love. Uh, but but what's next? What's next for the North? Uh, what what other teams are there in Impact Wrestling that could really challenge them uh, that fans would get excited about? There's um, the Deaners. Eh, okay, not not very excited about the Deaners uh, challenging uh, for the time. I mean, they do, they just lost to uh, Cancel Culture, and um, who else? Who else we got there? Who else we have? Uh, you have um, the Desi Hit Squad. Okay, I'm not very excited about the prospect of a Desi Hit Squad uh, North feud. Uh, so what's next? So what do they do? What do they do? 
What can you do with him? Here, now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say what I've been saying uh, for a little bit on the show. Sign some young, fresh tag team talent. You know, I've I've talked about young talent that I feel I should sign, and there are some young tag teams. Uh, that I feel that they could sign that are doing great on the indie scene right now. Um, take besties in the world. Besties in the world. Davey Vega, Matt Fitchett, great tag team. They should be signed to Impact Wrestling. They would be great additions to the tag team division in Impact Wrestling. And uh, TDT, La Team, La Tabernacle de Team. Uh, it was. Did I pronounce that? Yes. Le Tabernacle Team. It's Matthew St. Jacques and Thomas Dubois. Uh, great tag team up here in Ontario. Fantastic. They've had uh, they've had an appearance or two uh, on Impact Wrestling uh, months and months ago. I think they were they jobbed another team out. I can't remember who it was. But if they they're fantastic it's they they're c4 wrestling regulars you know they always tear the house down i've seen them live a couple of times and they're just they're just fantastic they would be also terrific additions to the impact wrestling tag team roster another tag team my boys sabotage in the maritimes justin newhook matt connors they are starting to break out big time in 2020 impact wrestling should sign them as well another team that would be a great addition to the impact wrestling roster let's get that impact wrestling tag team roster exciting again because right now there's really nobody there's no team out there right now that i'm saying oh man i can't wait to see them get a shot at the north there's no team out there right now unfortunately there's no team i can't i mean I mentioned the Deaners. I'm a big fan of Cousin Jake. He's Jake something uh, on the indie scene, and he's he's a beast. But I'm just I'm not excited about the Deaners challenging for the Impact Wrestling Tag Team titles. Now, other people listening might feel differently than me. That's fine, but let's 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 build up this tag team roster. And uh, there are I mentioned three great tag teams, and I'm sure there are others out there that they could bring in uh, to be. Um, viable challengers uh for the north uh just josh alexander and ethan page what i think is going to happen what i think is going to happen i have a very very strange feeling that cancel culture joey ryan and rob van dam which you know they made their debut against the deaners and you know i this there was an okay it was an okay team I, the, the cancel culture has a lot of potential just just wasn't really feeling it in the first match but they do have lots of potential i have a feeling that rob van dam and joey ryan are going to be the next tag team champions that's 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 my feeling that's my feeling um you know i could um i could cross my fingers and wish for for a bunch of young tag teams to be signed by impact wrestling but but uh, if i really want to be uh, if i want to make an intelligent prediction my intelligent prediction is rob van dam and joey ryan cancel culture will um challenge the north and they'll 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 steal a victory and they'll steal the titles that's that's what i'm thinking is going to happen and again I, I say this often I don't know any spoilers. I don't read spoilers, so I'm not giving away any spoilers. So I don't know. That's just uh, just my my prediction on uh, what's going to happen. What's going to happen there with uh, with the North and the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Titles? Now, I don't know if anybody was watching this week. If anybody was watching, uh, I, well, I'm sure many of you were watching Impact Wrestling. What I meant to say was I don't know if if many of you actually caught this this week on Impact Wrestling. But um, the uh, the backstage interviewer, whose name always escapes me, I can never remember her name, so I apologize for that. She was going to interview on uh, Ken Sh- Ken Shellrock uh, before he came to the ring and they uh, before he got fireballed by uh, Sammy Callahan, and uh, she knocks on the door. I don't know if anybody noticed this, but Ken Shamrock, obviously not realizing that it's interview time, screams out, "What!" Like he's getting very annoyed. And and then the interviewer, she kind of like has this weird look and she knocks again and then he opens the door and he's like, Oh, oh as if oh gosh, it's it's interview time right <laughs> like he wasn't expecting like maybe he thought the interview was gonna happen a half an hour later. But I thought that was very humorous. And she knocks on the door the first time and Ken Sharmak screams out, What? 
you know, like he's like he's pissed off. I thought that was um, if you didn't catch that, go back and watch that clip. And you have to turn the volume up a bit, and you'll, you'll hear Ken Shamrock angrily yell uh, the word "what." So it was um, it was quite humorous. It's quite humorous. Um, all right, back to the north for a second. Back to the north. I, I was just thinking of another another tag team that they. Um, that they kind of put together, and they're calling them Triple uh, Triple XL. It's AC Romero and Larry D. AC Romero and Larry D. They were there. That's an interesting tag team. I kind of like that tag team, and they had a great match against the North um, on um, recent show. I think it was Outbreak. Um, shoot, I'm sorry, it might not be Outbreak. I, I can't remember the name of the show, but they just had a great match with them, and they showed that they they could hang with the North. So that would be another uh, great team. Um, that they could put together, uh, which they have put together and would be... Uh, actually, you know what? I was saying I, I wouldn't be interested in seeing... Uh, there are no teams right now in Impact Wrestling that um, that I would say, oh gosh, I hope they challenge for the North and the uh, Impact Wrestling Tag Team titles. I'm going to take that back. I'm going to take that back because I would be very, very interested in seeing AC Romero and Larry D win a number of matches and then become the number one contender and then challenge the North for the Impact Wrestling Tag Team title. So there's a team right there that, that would get me excited. That would get me excited. Um, that would really uh, that I'm really interested in seeing challenging the North for the Impact Wrestling Tag Team title. So there you go. There is a team. AC Romero and Larry D. Speaking of Larry D, I had the honor and the privilege of sitting down with Larry D for a tremendous interview. And I know I mentioned uh, at the start of the show that this interview was going to be on this podcast, and that interview is going to be on this podcast. And I'm not going to make you wait any longer. I know you guys want to hear the interview. It was a great one. So here is my interview with Impact Wrestling's Larry D. Hello and welcome to the Shooting Up North interview. I am your host, Lewis Carlin, and I'm very excited today because we have an individual who actually is just celebrating 19 years in the business of professional wrestling. He's one of the newest members of the Impact Wrestling roster. Very happy to welcome the show, the legendary Larry D. Larry, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Me too. Me too. So 19 years, 19 years, that's that's uh, quite a long time to be in the business of professional wrestling. Did did that like fly right by or uh, how did how did those 19, what, how, how do you, what's your feeling on those 19 years? Uh, that's, uh, that's quite a long time, man. It is. Uh, 19 years is a long time, but, but it seems like yesterday that it was is day one. So I always tell everyone that, that I train or I mentor to, to, uh, to grab onto it because it goes by pretty quick. Well, yes. Do you have a, you have a big celebration set for uh, number 20, which, which will be here before we know it? Right. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to start putting that together now. I feel like number twenty is a is a is a big big feat for me. So, uh, you know, absolutely, we'll have to make it a big blowout celebration. There you go. There you go, man. So, uh, recently signed to Impact Wrestling. Uh, you've had a few matches uh, thus far. So, t- how how has your time been uh, so far uh, in Impact Wrestling? It's been great. I love it down there. I've I've learned so much already, and. You know, even even being 19 years in, you can still learn every day, every time that you have an opportunity. And uh, you know, it's just it's different. It's it's television. It, it's not it's not your normal indie uh, with just just a basic camera on you. And it's just so much more that goes into television wrestling. And then I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to do, and I'm excited to show the world what I can do. All right, man. I've I've wanted to ask you this question uh, for a while now, and I'm glad you agreed to do do this interview. When at, at No Surrender against Michael Elgin, which was a fantastic match, by the way, uh, when Scott Demore was entering the ring, the crowd yelling, sign Larry D, sign Larry D. Did you have any idea what was about to happen? Uh, I had no idea going in. Uh, when, I, when I looked up from the buckle and I seen Scott there, I kind of I put two and two together there, and it was just more of a, a happiness that came over me and, and, and just knowing that my wife was there and my, my close friends had came to watch cause it was, it was about a two hour drive from here in Georgetown. And, um, you know, just, just having my loved ones there and sharing the moment with my wife afterwards. I don't, I don't know if they, 
show that part on the the pay-per-view or not but my wife came in the ring and we celebrated had a moment together and that was really cool and it was something that i feel like you know you work for your entire life i think that people uh will walk around and tell you that that you know they don't their their ambition is not to make it to the next level and they they enjoy doing it like this and they don't want to contract and then i will look at them and tell them that they're lying because that's okay. what we get in this for is to, is to be on the next level and and, and when it, when that happened it was just it was just an overwhelming of happiness that came across me well that, by the way they they did show the celebration with your wife coming through the ring so that that was that was really oh, cool really cool <laughs> That was really cool. That was a great, great moment, man. Uh, so, um, absolute feeling of happiness. So, when you came from that hug, you, there must have been an, an incredible amount of of happiness and joy just going through your body. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, there was there was nothing but joy. I couldn't wait to to call my dad. I couldn't wait to call my son. I couldn't wait to to see my wife and, and my friends that came and we had a moment there before I, I made it back to the dressing room in the parking lot. And I'll never forget that, you know, in that first phone call to my son and he said, are you serious? And then, yeah, I'm serious. It, it, you know, and, and I could just hear in his voice how, how proud he was to be my son, you know, and, and, and how yeah. happy he was for his dad. That was a great, great moment, man. Great moment. I'm glad you're a part of the, the Impact Wrestling roster. Um, uh, like I, uh, I said before, we before we hit record, uh, you've had a couple of matches. I've seen a few of your matches, uh, especially the the team of you and AC Romero. Uh, whose idea was to put that team together? I know you you guys teamed before uh, Impact Wrestling, but who's who made the decision to say, um, all right, let's let's put you guys together and, and make you a tag team? You know, I I didn't know that we were even tagging until I'd seen until I'd seen the promo bill, you know, for the, the Lexington event and the Louisville event. And uh, I, I'm not sure how the name came about, but I, I want to say that it was it was D'Lo Brown on commentary on the night before in the Lexington event that kept calling us Triple XL, and it kind of stuck. So uh, I, I like it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it and, and get to prove to the world that we might be a little bit bigger, but uh, we can still get out there and go with the best of them. Yeah, I mean, you guys are- – Tremendous match against the North at Outbreak, uh, Josh Alexander, Ethan Page. Fantastic match, and um, you guys fell a little short. Uh, but what were your thoughts on that match, and uh, would you like a second opportunity at the at the North and the Tag Team titles? I would, lo- I would love a second opportunity against the North and the Tag Team titles. I-, I feel like the North is one of the best tag teams in the world right now. I feel like they they are strong. They they have everything that you need to to be uh, next level wrestling. You know, to me that they they are they define next level tag team. Uh, Ethan Page is so good. Josh Alexander is is unbelievable, and uh, they hit really hard. So I mean, I, that's I, I can't help but not to like them. You know, uh, I believe I believe that they work hard for what they got, and they 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 represent the tag titles very well. But I think that. Ace Romero and I will also represent the tag division and impact wrestling very well on the same page. Yeah, well, I'm, actually, I, I know um, I know Josh Alexander fairly well, and uh, he actually had something that he wanted me uh, to say to you. So he has a he's a quote, a quote from Josh Alexander. Uh, he says um, that you're a big, strong, physical, old school wrestler's wrestler. Your athletic ability for a man your size really caught him off guard. He's become a fan of yours, and he wants to try and get one more, uh, get more out of the next match. Uh, I said, next time, let's tear the house down, win, lose, a draw. I'm sure it's going to be a blast. I, w- I would love that. I, I think, I think coming from Josh Alexander, those words do nothing but just drive me to do better and continue to push forward because I would love to wrestle them again, whether it be, you know, Josh and I in the singles or Ethan and I in the singles or however we split it up. I would love to to run that again. I would love to run the tag match again because I think that we can do so much more and make so much more of a, an impact uh, of our own. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, as a, as a fan of Impact Wrestling, I'm really looking forward to um, the the rematch between you uh, between you and the North. Uh, great, great match at Outbreak. And really looking forward to the second match, third, fourth, and fifth match as well. I hope there's a series of matches against the North because uh, it could be really, really, really good, man. Another great match uh, against OVE at Sacrifice. And it must have been absolutely fantastic to get that win over uh, Dave Chris for your team, man. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, when you think OVE, you think you think of of you know former tag champ himself, 
uh, now. Now he's in there with Madman Fulton, who is one of the better big men, uh, not only in Impact, but in the industry itself. And to go out there and prove that we can hang with those guys that have been there, uh, we're kind of the new guys, so we have a lot to prove. And I felt like uh, that night we, we did just that. All right, cool. So what's what's the main goal? What's your main goal uh, with Impact Wrestling? Uh, my main goal with Impact Wrestling is to go as far as I can. And, and I, you know, I said it from day one, I just want to be the best employee that I can be and, and do what's asked of me and, and make Impact Wrestling better than what it already is. Um, my biggest goal is just to continue to to show the prove to the world that, that, you know, just because you've wrestled for several years or because you might not be six foot seven or your, your body might not be chiseled from stone. That doesn't mean that, that you can't make it. That doesn't mean that hard, hard work and dedication can't get you there. I just want to be an example for someone that's been told no their entire life. They can't do something and turn around and do it because that's the way that I've lived my life from the time that I was a child. So, so a lot of people were telling you that they from the start that you weren't able, weren't going to be able to do it. You weren't going to be able to be successful yeah, as a professional wrestler. Yeah, because you know I was always a bigger guy. I was always, I, I've always been the athletic guy, but I, I've always been bigger. I've been, you know, uh, the guy that they would, they they look at at first glance and say, well, he's he's going to be too slow. He's going to be uh, a step behind, or he's not going to be able to keep up. And then, and then when I prove to them that I can keep up and, and do the things that I'm not supposed to do. Uh, I feel like it, it turns some heads and it, it makes me original. It makes, it makes Ace original. I think that's why we, we will team so well because Ace is a big guy and he does things that you wouldn't expect uh, big guys to do. So I think that we can not only do that, and, but we also put the super heavyweights on the map and, and show that Impact Wrestling has something special there with Fala Ba. They got myself and they've got Madman Fulton, AC Romero. There's, there's so many, so many big guys that can that can really take the heavyweight and the super heavyweight hoss side of things to a different level. Absolutely, man. Anybody that if anybody ever said that to me, I would just say, "All right, well, go watch the No Surrender match against Michael Elgin, and uh, then then you'll see that Larry D, Larry D deserves every bit of success that he's achieving. That was that was a tremendous match, and I just want to go back to that match for a second because that was a tough match, and you looked like um, you looked pretty uh banged up at the end of the match how how were you i know the the joy overcame you and you got the contract but before you knew that you were getting the contract were you were you hurting after that match because you really took oh, some yeah. hard shots in that match yeah those uh those lariats uh, i felt them for about the next four days you know i have stiff neck mike elgin's a tough wrestler mike elgin's one of the, the best wrestlers in the world if, if i were to put him uh in a group, I would say that he is, he's in my top 10 wrestlers in the world. And then, you know, maybe, maybe top five because he's just on a complete different level. Uh, just being in there with him alone, uh, I feel like it helps me uh, get to where I needed to be. And, and, you know, originally I was, I was in the, the hall scramble and, and then I, and it got switched somehow. And, and, Thankfully, it got switched to get in there with Michael Elgin because Michael Elgin brings out the best in you. And, and he's, he, like I said, I feel like he's either the top 10 or top five on my list in the world right now. And you went toe to toe with him, man. It was, again, if anybody listening that right now that hasn't seen that match, you got to see that match. Larry D versus Michael Elgin at No Surrender. Fantastic, fantastic match, man. So. Who are, you, who are you hoping to face an impact that you haven't faced yet? Because I know there are a lot of guys uh, in impact that you probably have faced on the indies. But are there anybody? Is there anybody in impact that you haven't faced that you would like to go one on one with? Uh, I, I think that that myself and Moose is long overdue. I feel like uh, you know we could we could really put on something spectacular, and I feel like we, we'll get our chance, our opportunity, and then then when that opportunity comes, I, I would I would like to to go out there and prove to the world that, that, you know, how great Moose is, but, but also how good I can be as well. And, and, and things that I can do with someone that's been there, that's been a world champion. That's, that's pretty much done everything you can do and just continues to climb. So I feel like that's good company to be around. If I can prove that I can hang with Moose, I feel like I can hang with uh, just about anyone there in the company or anyone in the wrestling world alone. Yeah, you know, I tell you, just, you just kind of made me excited because I wasn't, I, I, wasn't thinking of you versus Moose, but uh, that would be a that would be a tremendous match. Uh, so hopefully, uh, Scott Demore, Don Callis will put that match together um, very soon because that that will be an absolute great one. Hopefully, uh, you could uh, land one of those right hands on Moose and knock him out and, and get the yeah. freak out. That'd be great, man. 
That's all it takes. Is I'm just one, one, one punch away. That's all I am. One punch away, man. One punch away. Um, speaking of that punch, I was watching a match um, on YouTube against you and Zachary Wentz, Rockstar Pro. You look like you took his absolute head off when you hit him with that with the with the right hand. Like, uh, are you uh, now? I know it's professional wrestling, but like, are you how how are you faking that? Because it looks like you're really connecting with those punches, man. <laughs> Who's to say I'm not really connecting with those punches? Oh, it shouldn't say that, but I'm saying you know it's. Uh, yeah, it's because his hand just went up in the air and he started, he started shaking. I was like, my goodness, man. How does that, how can anybody take that and get back up, man? It's, it's, that's, that's insane. <laughs> when, when did you start using that? Uh, was that always your finisher or when did you start using that? Uh, no, it wasn't always. I'd say about the last four years. I, I, I knew that I had a pretty decent punch and, and I, I needed something that, that would be quick, something that I could hit at any given time. And, and I felt like a good solid punch to the mouth or the, the jaw was pretty much going to do the trick for three seconds at least. And it's been working well for me. And and, and I think that ultimately is what's gotten me to the next level is, is, is that punch. Uh, I feel like uh, it's, yeah. it's something that, that people anticipate. And, and then when they finally get it, it, it makes them extremely excited to, to see someone get knocked out by this big hand of mine. Yeah, another the, another match I was watching before uh, before you called us uh, uh, against Dustin Rays, also Rockstar Pro. He just took his head off as well. That was uh, that was insane, man. But uh, I'm sure we're going to be seeing that punch a lot in Impact Wrestling, man. Yeah, I hope. I'm I'm looking forward to delivering a few. There you go, man. So so how did it all start? So let's go back to the beginning. What 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 um what sparked your interest in uh, pursuing a career in professional wrestling? Uh, I've always I've always liked professional wrestling uh, i used to go with my dad he would take our family every friday night here to the georgetown convention center and uh we would watch pro wrestling and i just fell in love with it from day one um i never watched like uh the, the next level wrestling i didn't know anything about television wrestling at that my young age and the only thing i knew about wrestling was that it was there at the bingo hall every friday night and and that my my first love was independent wrestling because I seen it on a smaller scale, and then I uh, I started watch on television. I was a Hulk Hogan fan, and uh, I came in around the Savage Hogan feud, and, and I was just hooked from then. And from there forward, I just told my parents that's what I wanted to be. And the opportunity came years later, probably about nine or ten years later from that point. Uh, I started training, and and I got my start, and was off to the races from that point and never looked back. There you go, man. There you go. So who's your all time favorite? Do you have, um, was it, uh, you mentioned Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, but do you have a, do you have an all time favorite? Oh, Dusty Rose is my all time favorite. Okay. There Dusty you go. Rose is the man. Yeah. He's the man. I feel like, it's like I can relate to Dusty a lot. You know, he, he can get in there and prove that he can do things that maybe someone that didn't know that he was a wrestler at first glance would say, well, no, you know he's he's not he, he he can't keep up with those guys. Look at look at those guys in tip top shape, and and then you watch Dusty Rhodes, and he'll go out there and wrestle forty five minutes to an hour, and and be just phenomenal. And just the way that the crowd loved him, and and just it's the working man. And I, I think that we relate a lot to one another. Yeah, absolute legend, legend. That's my. I, I actually I'm a little older than I think. I Bruno San Martino got me into professional wrestling. He made okay. me a fan back in uh, night. Back in 1978, <laughs> but uh, my favorite, Roddy Piper. Uh, Roddy Piper is, um, I think, is one of the greatest of all time. My all-time favorite. What, what are your thoughts on Roddy Piper? I love Roddy Piper. I, I think that that he's so good at what he does. I think he, I think that he he could captivate a crowd either way. You know, and and Mike's skills are are untouchable. And and one could only hope to be just a hint as good as he was in the ring and on the microphone. So it's like he he turned the business. He he he's, he's one of the best heels that you could ever come across in this in this industry. And and people just thrive to just be a little bit like him. And, and I think that they're going to be okay. There you go. And I totally agree. So so what do you remember about your first match? Uh, I, I would I would say I would assume it's 19 years ago. What what would uh what do you remember about your first match and and how were you feeling when you walked through that curtain for the first time? I felt I felt scared all day. I felt uh, unsure. I hope that that I would do what I was taught to do and what I worked so hard to achieve. Um, so I, I remember just just being real nauseous, kind of uh, uh, 
out of body experience almost uh, if, if this is really happening. Uh, but once once I feel like I hit through the curtain, uh, it, it was fine and there was no nerves. And I, I I've done fairly decent for for that level, I guess. We always go back and watch our first early matches and think, oh my gosh, that was terrible. But I think for that point in time that we did okay and and uh, just continue to learn from there and. and I'll never forget that first match. It was it was definitely an experience to to go out and see my family and my parents there. My dad was so so proud. To this day, he's still so proud. Every time that I'm in the ring and he's fortunate enough to be at the event, I can just see it lights him up every time. And 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 that's something that that I always cherish is, is seeing my parents how how excited and proud they are of me every time I get in the ring. That's that's awesome, man. So so they they supported you from day one because I, I I'm, uh, is, is that correct? They support you from day one because I know a lot of wrestlers I've spoken to uh, they don't always have the support of their parents. But uh, w- did your su- parents support you from day one when you made that decision? A hundred percent. I was I started professional wrestling when I was in high school. So you know one of okay. the the only thing that my parents asked of me was to to make sure that I finished school. So. Several times I, w- I would be doing homework at the breakfast table the next morning, and and they trusted me. You know, it seemed like when I got my driver's license, my dad kind of like, "Hey, you're a man now. You know, just don't do stupid stuff." And uh, he uh, he trusted uh, they trusted the guy that I was traveling with, the guy that taught me, the guy that trained me, and uh, you know, he gave me his word that I would finish school, and and I did. I didn't want to I didn't want to quit school on account of that I got into pro wrestling. I wanted to to hold up my end of the deal to my, my parents and, and make sure that I, I finished my school. And, and it was tough, but, but I made it happen. All right, cool, man. So, so tell me about the Legends Wrestling Academy. That's, that's your wrestling school. What's, um, what, uh, what made you decide to, to open up a school? Uh, I've always liked mentoring uh, people. I've always liked to help people get further along in wrestling and, uh, help them achieve their dream of what I've had. And it started out, I would always lead classes for, you know, other promotions that maybe I was was working for. And uh, then I got the opportunity with Primetime Wrestling uh, there in Paris, Kentucky. Uh, and I always was a head trainer for those that company. And we just decided to rebrand it because I, I feel like so now now there's so many – three or four letter wrestling schools, you know, it might be X, Y, Z pro wrestling school or ABC pro wrestling school. So I wanted to kind of make it my own and, and brand it. And, you know, I, I felt like I was starting to make a little name around the area and around the, 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 the state surrounding. So I felt like we can brand it with legends pro wrestling and then put my, my, my fist in the middle of the logo. And then they, they would relate it to me. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to them one-to-one I don't just take money or, or anything like that. I want to make sure it's what they want to do because it is an investment. And, you know, you, you want to make sure that, that you want to do this. And I, I'm not one to just take someone's money on account of them wanting to hand it over. And uh, just just seeing people be able to go further than what they believe. A lot of guys in, in Kentucky just want to stay local. They want to stay in their bubble. And, and I'm the guy that wants to push you to go further because I know if you push and you step outside of your comfort zone, uh, big things can happen, obviously, with with me. I took a gamble on myself and started traveling maybe about four years ago, five years ago, a lot more than I had years prior and end up uh, working out for me. And now I'm signed to Impact Wrestling and, and providing and, and doing everything I can and living my dream. So what what like what advice would you have for someone? Say say an eighteen year old kid comes up to you and says, I want to be a professional wrestler. What's the first bit of advice you would give somebody who just has just made the decision that they want to become a professional wrestler? Uh dedication. You can't you can't be half in or half out. You have to be you have to be a hundred percent dedicated to this. You know, you, you can't can't allow anyone else to make your decision for you. This has to be something that that you want to do. I, I tell my students every session I feel at least once is I wish that I could get inside your body and 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 do what I need you to do, but I can't. That's why you know you have to you have to do this for yourself. I can only be here to give you advice and help you get you there. Um, you know, and, and just just make sure that you're not 
you're not just going in because you were just a fan of it. You know, you really have to be, you have to love this to want to do this. I mean, several fans uh, think that maybe they want to wrestle, but, but once it's time to get in there and go, they realize they'd much rather be a fan. Yeah, I know. I, I I do some interviews in um at a wrestling school, and I had asked one of the wrestlers if it's okay if I run the ropes, and he said absolutely not. If you're not a if you're not a trained professional wrestler, I wouldn't advise that you that you run the ropes. And I asked him why, and he said because you might fall through the ropes. And it looks like that. How could you fall through the ropes? But I I can see what he's saying because I've seen a lot of people fall through the ropes. So I, I kind of took his advice not not to run the ropes. But but no, oh, I, I if if you're not dedicated. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen a guy the rope break, and and you know if you don't know how to hit the ropes properly, and uh, that rope breaks, it could be lights out for you. Absolutely. So I'm glad I took his advice and I didn't run the ropes. Um, <laughs> and I, I I I I was able to walk out of the wrestling school uh, in one piece because I <laughs> without running the ropes. But um, I was I was actually doing research. I saw early in your career, I think it was 2006 or 2007, you actually faced Jerry Lawler. Was that was that the biggest name that you wrestled up until that time? Um, that was that was for the Mountain Wrestling Association. Uh, and I I got I got the okay. opportunity to to wrestle with with Jerry Lawler about three times through the Mountain Wrestling Association. Uh, that's kind of where I cut okay. my teeth. So, and that's what's where the legendary that that's actually where the legendary Larry D name came from. Uh, they called it okay. the Legend versus Legend match and of course i was young by 22 or 23 and i was a just this this pompous heel who who obviously was not a legend just just in his own mind and and they they brought a real legend in to 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 combat me and, and i'm telling you that that guy hits extremely hard uh we was in there maybe uh on two or three minutes and i had already had a busted lip and a busted nose and i knew then well i better start bringing it back otherwise i'm going to I'm gonna end up with a broken nose or something to 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 know <laughs> that even even though he might be in his fifties and me in my early twenties, he's still gonna bring the thunder to me. So uh, I learned a lot. I mean, it, getting in there with the MWA, I had I had the opportunity to share the ring with Abyss and Samoa Joe and uh, you know Chris Harris and and guys like that and, and Tracy Smothers and, and Jerry Lawler and just the list went on. It, it was a really good run for me there at the MWA and. And it helped me prepare me for later years to to share the ring with those guys. In nineteen years, uh, do you have a favorite opponent uh, that that you've uh, gone up against? Uh, in nineteen years, wow, that's 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 a big question. I, I like I like sharing the ring with Jake Christ. Uh, I believe that uh, okay. he okay. brings the best out in me, and I bring the best out in him. But you know, as far as an unsigned talent goes, that I I, I think above anyone. Uh, there's a guy in the Midwest, his name is Aaron Williams. And, and I feel like he is one of the best unsigned talents out there today. If you ever get the chance today or this coming week, I would suggest looking up Aaron Williams, uh, on YouTube or, or just Google search him and, and, and watch what he does. And you, you, you would probably agree. There's no reason that Aaron should not be signed to a major right now. Uh, I think, I think that him and I just have the chemistry, uh, the friendship and he's just a caring guy and, and, and as am I. And, and I think that we go out there and we just put on some phenomenal matches. And then I would say that Aaron Williams is probably my, my favorite opponent. Okay. Well, I just wrote the name down so I don't forget. And I will definitely check, uh, check out some Aaron Williams matches on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, we mentioned favorite opponent. What about dream opponents? Uh, do you have a dream opponent that you haven't, uh, gone one-on-one -on -one with yet uh, that you would like to uh you know i'm not put thought into it because i mean i feel like I, someone that's not my dream opponent may end up being my my number one so i just try to get in there with who they put me with and, and do my best um i mean i think it's just a broad spectrum I, I could i could go for hours and tell you guys that i want to wrestle or that, things like that but um you know off the top of my head I, I really can't say off the top of my head because there's so many you know, uh, if, if anything, I would like to uh, maybe catch D'Lo Brown one time just to just to pick his brain and, and see just just from being around him okay. now. And, and, and I think that D'Lo Brown would well, I would learn so much from D'Lo Brown in, in, in the ring. Yes. All right. Cool, man. It could happen, man. He's still wrestling for impact. So you yeah, might see that yeah, match uh, be coming up soon. this year. Yeah, I would love that. 
that happens soon. So, um, what show? What do you hope to have accomplished um, by 2020? I know by the end of 2020, I know you you signed to Impact, but uh, you hoping to have a title in Impact by 2020. Uh, so, what's um, yeah, what's uh, what's the to- what's the yeah. I want uh, I want all that's handed to me. I, you know, I want all that all that that they believe that I can handle, and and I would I would love to I would love to to hold a title impact. I would I would love that. But but just being there in general, uh, and and just soaking it all in, being on television and doing all the things that I dreamed of is is, is what I want. And I feel like you know this year started out rough with with the. Uh, everything that's happening in our world today. And I feel like once we get back at it, there's yeah. going to be so many hungry guys, so many hungry girls that are willing yeah. to, to put it all out on the line and prove their, their worth and, and where they need to be. So it's like the end of 2020, I just want to wrestle the best of the best. You know, I want to, I want to be at the, the, the top of the mountain with those guys that are there and prove that, that I, I need to be there beside them. And that, that's my plan for 2020 is to wrestle the, the best in the world all over the world. All right, man, uh, and, and I do hope this uh, this whole everything that's going on right now with all the cancellations. I hope that ends soon because I know uh, a lot of a lot of you guys are suffering, and um, it's hopefully I'm I'm hoping it'll you guys will start wrestling again in a month or so. But yeah, um, I'm hoping I got my fingers crossed. You know? We just got. So we before we wrap this up, people. before we wrap. Absolutely, stay safe. That's the number one priority. I, I know in I know in Japan they're starting to in front of crowds again. So that's that's a that's a good step. So hopefully, um, we'll start getting uh, some shows, some shows in the states and here in Canada um, very very soon. So I got my fingers crossed for that, man. So before we wrap this up, before we wrap this up, uh, is there anything you want to plug? I I believe you have a T shirt that that you sell, or maybe a T shirt. Uh, but if there's anything you want to plug, um, social media, merchandise, anything, feel free, my friend. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm currently sold out of merchandise. So uh, as I'm going to re-up this this whole pandemic thing took over, and so I'm kind of missed the ball on that. But you can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Legend of Larry D. Uh, and, you know, I, I reply fairly quickly. Uh, you know, that's where I do most of my most of my, my things is, is on Twitter. So, I, you know, uh, I don't really mess with Instagram, Facebook, yeah, but it's more on a personal level. Um but but just just Twitter is kind of kind of my thing now. It's an at Legend of Larry D, and and that's where I kind of handle my bookings and and such like that. So if you want to follow me, I always follow back, and I'm just trying to get up there and get those numbers up. There you go, man. Well, Larry, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I really appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule uh, and uh, sitting down with me today for this interview. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you. And I wish you nothing but amazing success uh, in your time on Impact Wrestling and on the indie scene as well, my friend. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. My pleasure. And if, if you want to do this again, man, if you ever want Again, you're always welcome here. I'd I'd love to chat with you, uh, maybe four or five months down the road, as well to see. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Let's just to go over what we'll we'll set it up. I'm always open to talk about wrestling. It's it's the best thing in the world. Fantastic. Thank you so much, man. Well, this has been the sh- the Shooting Up North interview. I'm your host, Lewis. Again, want to thank my guest today, Larry D. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye, and stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye bye.